Hey everybody, Say Galatius here. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit different than some of my other ones because I want to talk about a theory that I've had for a while about Shenmue. And I've got to be straightforward, full disclosure, I got this idea from watching a channel called Phoenix Flash TV. Uh, his Shenmue videos are some of the best on the internet, and I am a huge fan of his, so please go check out the content on his channel. It is... It's just great. It's awesome. So now on to my theory. Taken at face value, Shenmue seems to be a fairly straightforward story about a young man who seeks revenge for his father's death at the hands of a powerful Chinese drug cartel leader named Lan Di. The plot begins to open up through engaging in dialogue with non-playable characters in a way that is very reminiscent of sort of like a point-and-click detective type game. However, something fishy lingers just below the surface of this engaging tale. My theory is that Shenmue is secretly, or maybe not so secretly, a commentary on the emotional strain undergone by corporate insiders of the video game industry. And if that seems too far-fetched, just hear me out, give me a chance. Uh, I'm going to start with something that Phoenix Splash TV pointed out in one of his videos, which was an observation he made about how much fourth wall breaking occurs in the Shenmue universe. And one example of that would be how many of the creators and collaborators of the Shenmue project have avatars or, or characters of themselves in the game. And one of these avatars is Mr. I'm going to butcher his name, but I'm going to try my best. Uh, Hide Hidekazu Yukawa. And he was the actual senior managing director of Sega himself. And he appeared in the full game as well as in the What's Shenmue promotional video, in which he is shown clearly agonizing over the sales of the Sega Dreamcast. And not only does Yukawa appear in the game, his image is also on posters, uh, it's on batteries, there are even a couple of collectible toys of him that you can get from the Abe store if you buy enough chips and chocolate and stuff. And this guy tried everything in real life to sell the Sega Saturn or excuse me, to sell the Sega Dreamcast, rather. And just look at some of these commercials that are up on YouTube, uh, where everybody keeps telling him that Sega sucks, and Sony is way better, and it, just the way he takes it is... <laughs> it's really heartbreaking, but it's also kind of hilarious. Um, and so what I want to do now is point out some clear parallels between the food businesses in downtown Dabuita with the video game industry that existed during the Dreamcast's lifespan. So the competition between the bread shop, the burger stand, the hot dog truck, and the pizzeria made me think of how crowded the video game market felt at the time of the Dreamcast, with Nintendo and Sony and Sega all simultaneously vying for dominance in a, in a fairly small market. Or a crowded market, I should say. And I'm pretty sure that this guy right here is a clear reference to someone we all know. Mario, you get the bella donna. You get the happy, huh? Hmm. I wonder. Mario, Nozomi's growing out their hair. Hmm. Now, when the Dreamcast launched, things were looking up for Sega, but the PlayStation 2 was always looming on the horizon, and Sega needed to increase their install base, and they really needed the support of their loyal fans. Uh, and it's no secret that Sega were worried about Sony, since the PlayStation dominated in sales in Japan, in Europe, and North America, compared to the ill-fated but oh-so-wonderful Sega Saturn. And to further reinforce this metaphor, just look at Ryo Hazuki's dad. He looks just like Seigata Sanshiro. You know, Seigata Sanshiro, he played Hiroshi, what, he's played by Hiroshi uh, Fujioka. I know I, I ruined his name too, but he's he's the first Kamen Rider. And, and Seigata Sanshiro traveled across the Japanese countryside with the goal of forcing people to play the Sega Saturn uh, using any means necessary, uh, including force, extreme force. And um, Sega Sanshiro is the Sega Saturn personified. 
essentially. Um, and that should that much should be clear after watching some of these. Who does Landy, the murderer of Iwao Hazuki, represent? If you guessed Sony, then you would be right. Landy is essentially the personification of the Sony Corporation. And just look at him annihilate Ryo's dad right here. It's completely savage. To me, this is a clear reference to how Sony, the, the Sony PlayStation, decimated the Sega Saturn in sales, despite the fact that the Saturn was awesome. And anyhow, since Iwao is representing the past defeat of Sega by the hands of Sony, that would make Ryo the personification of the hopes and aspirations of Sega as a company. Sega poured every last ounce of their strength and their faith and their talent and their, their solvency as a company into making the Dreamcast work. All the bets were off. It was a long shot, but the hope was that just as Ryo, who sought revenge for killing his father's murderer, would defeat Landy and have a happy ending, it was the hope that the Dreamcast would avenge the Sega Saturn by standing up to and defeating Sony. And this was a risky gamble, and unfortunately it's one that we know only too well would not pay off. I will avenge my father's death. But the irony of the whole thing is that even though Shenmue is secretly a story about Sega's hopes at defeating the monolithic brand uh, that Sony had in the PlayStation, we know that about a decade and a half after Shenmue 2 was released, that Sony would end up playing a huge part in resurrecting the Shenmue franchise from the dead. Just like the mirror in Ryo's possession, Shenmue is a phoenix rising from the ashes of obscurity and neglect. And I can't wait to get my hands on Shenmue 3, and I wonder if there will be any subtle fourth wall breaks in that game. I'll be very interested to see that, if there are any at all. Uh, and so anyhow, that's really all I've got. If you made it this far into the video, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. I love Shenmue. I love talking with people about Shenmue. And if you think my theory is wrong, by all means, feel free to just shred me in the comment section below. But in any case, I just hope everybody has a great day. Please be safe, and I will see you next time. Oh, hi, Ryo. You know my daddy? He bakes bread every day. My daddy's bread tastes really good. But you know, I like hamburgers more. Raider! When the cherry blossoms fall, the dragon shall descend on you. Hurry.
the cherry blossoms fall.